Hey, my name's Shutik. Late last night, the Bone Lady visited and she gave me this, the Ion Blue Shift. The Blue Shift is a Boss DC2 Dimension C clone with a few tricks up its sleeve. First, it can take a mono input and output in either mono or stereo. It can do this whether or not the effect is engaged. A big difference between this and the original Dimension C is that you can activate multiple modes at once using the toggle switches. This gives you a total of seven different chorus modes. Today we're gonna to cover the controls, listen to some sound samples, and then cover some highlights from my build. We're also gonna calibrate the Ion Blue Shift using an oscilloscope that I bought from a stranger on Craigslist. The controls on the Blue Shift are straightforward. You have the four standard Dimension C modes. Mode one is all switches in the down position. You also have the additional three combo modes that can be had by engaging the switches in different combinations. You can output in either mono or stereo. In stereo mode, a Bucket Brigade device chip controls each side of the stereo signal. First up, the sounds. My guitar today is a Fernandez with stonewall pickups in all three positions. My amp is a Triatone 18 watt that I built. This is what it sounds like clean. Let's start our tour of the Blue Shift in a special mode with all switches engaged. Now let's take a look at mode three. I'm gonna add a little distortion for this. I'm using a JHS pack rat, which I'm feeding into the blue shift. <laughs> Finally, let's have a listen in stereo. I don't have two amps available, so I'm going to use a Universal Audio Ruby 63. Now let's talk about the build. This is a heavy duty one. There are a lot of parts and you need to be patient and organized in order to see this one through to the end. Ion provides an excellent build guide and I highly recommend you read this from front to back before you begin soldering or drilling. Ion provides a bill of materials that you can load directly into Mauser, which will save you a ton of time in selecting parts. Just note that not all parts are always gonna be available at any given time. 
In the event that you need to make substitutions, pay attention to part values and sizes. I like to keep two different tabs open so I can A, B between the original part and the part that I'm going to make a substitution with. The spreadsheet also has information on where you can find non-Mauser parts. This board is absolutely packed with components. Because of this, I recommend you sort everything before you start soldering. I also like to test my resistors before I solder anything into the board. Finding a problem in this later would be an absolute nightmare, so I recommend taking your time and making sure you have the correct part before you solder. I recommend populating the board in the following order. Jumpers, diodes, resistors, sockets, and finally capacitors. For assembly of the enclosure parts, I'd recommend following the order in the build guide. Audio jacks, DC jack, foot switch, toggles, LED, hex standoff. Enough foreplay. Let's f There are two PCBs in this build. Sandwiching these boards together will bring you great satisfaction and many years of happiness. You'll solder the pin headers into the clock or bottom PCB first, and then rest the second board on top. When installing these, I usually solder one corner and then the corner on the opposite side. Once you've made sure that the header is flush and straight, you can solder the remaining pins. Once you have things lined up nicely, you can solder the pins easily. This will allow you to get a snug but not too tight connection between boards. Let's look at the Bucket Brigade device and clocks. The original Dimension C used MN3207 and MN3102 BBDs and clocks. I couldn't find these anywhere. I used Cool Audio V3207 and V3102s from Small Bear for my build. They sound good to me. I sprung the extra 10 bucks for the OPA2134 op amps instead of the TL072s as suggested by the guide. The reason you would want a higher quality part here is because the op amps are in the signal path. For my 3PDT, I used a Feathersoft latched foot switch from Love My Switches. The switch is rated for 30,000 cycles. The switch also has a high temperature epoxy which can handle up to 350 degrees when soldering. I picked this switch because it's teal. For this build, I chose to go with the stock bypass method which mimics the signal path for the original circuit. With stock bypass, the signal passes through pre-emphasis and de-emphasis filters. The last parts I'd like to highlight are the SPDT and DPDT toggles. I used mountain switches that are recommended in the build guide. They feel nice. Finally, let's take a look at the enclosure. Some of the paint ended up running on the sides. I'm not going to show you this because it brings me great shame. Next time I paint and seal an enclosure, I'm not going to do it outside in 40 mile per hour winds. This is also my first water slide decal I've used. Ion provides a template for this on their product page. I think overall, it came out okay. One other thing, I put a piece of plastic in between the board and the back plate in order to prevent any shorting and to also keep the boards pushed a little more snugly together. Now let's move on to the calibration. Now that it's all put together, we need to calibrate. There are two calibration points used to maximize the headroom of each bucket brigade delay. You can do this by ear, but we're going to go the extra mile and use an oscilloscope. First, get the BBDs into the right ballpark. Measure the voltage at pin 3 of each BBD, then adjust the corresponding potentiometer at TR1 or TR2. We're looking for 3.4 volts here. Now for the scope work. We'll be using a Tektronix 465. This unit smells like cigarettes in the threat of atomic warfare. We need to generate a signal to calibrate with. I don't have a signal generator proper, so we'll use the tone generator on my DAW. To do this, we'll send the line out of the DAW to a quarter inch cable that is connected to a female jack. The female jack is connected to a multimeter using a pair of alligator clips. This frees up your hands to adjust the signal generator on your DAW while monitoring the change in voltage. I adjusted the decibels of the 8K signal generated by the tone generator to get 2 volts. In my case, the signal reached 2 volts at 7.5 decibels. Now plug the quarter inch cable sending the 2 volt signal into the pedal input. Next, ground the probe using the DC jack on the blue shift. 
Now we're going to adjust TR1 in order to get the waveform as symmetrical as possible. We'll test at TP1 when we make this adjustment. You want to get it to look as symmetrical as possible. It's not going to look perfect. Once things are looking good, move to TR2 and TP2 and repeat the procedure. Nice job! Now you've calibrated your blue shift. Quick note, many DAWs have a 2 volt output limit. In my case, 1.9 volts is as close as I could get to 2 volts without any clipping. It was a massive pain in the ass to film this part. Please drop a comment if you found it useful. I really enjoyed this build. There were a lot of parts going into it and it was a little nerve wracking going along, but once you get to the end and you sandwich the two boards together and then you turn it on and it works, it's really, really satisfying. The chorus itself sounds great. It's a really different type of chorus that's not too intense or too in your face. It's got a nice understated, classy sort of sound to it. I think it would sound really great on vocals too, and that's something I'm definitely gonna play around with in the future. I really hope Ion makes another monster build like this. It's a lot of fun. I have other videos, watch them.